Hey guys, it's Big T and welcome back to yet another Holy Land vlog. We are in the Holy Land. Woo! It's an exciting day. We've already ate breakfast this morning. We keep waking up at like 6 a.m. so we're a little tired, a little cranky, but that's okay. We're going to some good spots today. We're going to Nazareth. We're going to a few other spots too. We're getting baptized today in the Jordan River. And we're gonna have a good day, guys. Y'all stay tuned. This channel is, I mean, this this series is gonna be a great series. I just know it. Um, but anyways, we are going to head to the bus and we will see y'all there. Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus because he Nazareth, and we have a long trip ahead of us. Uh, did having... it say how long? No, they didn't say how long, but it's, it's usually a long trip. <laughs> the very first, the very first stop is usually like 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, it's not so too bad. it's not too bad. But we're gonna have a really good day today. Smiling a lot today, living life to the fullest today. It's a great day, and we'll see y'all when we get to Nazareth. All right, guys, we made it here to the Nazareth Village. Supposed to be like a recreation, right? Yeah. I think they like said they what it they like. what it would have been like. They recreated it basically. We're in the heart of Nazareth, like you can see in the background, the city itself. And then up here, and of course you got uh, Billy Bob here. Now I mean Larry. <laughs> oh, hello. Good morning. We're in <laughs> Nazareth. This is a fantastic location. Let me pan around this way and talk to you a little bit. I'm with CNN. And it's commonly reported that Jesus lived in the third apartment in this building to my left. <laughs> oh, he's a funny man, funny man. But anyways, we're going to have a really good time here, guys, and we'll see y'all in just one second. <laughs> ...of the first century to build it. Uh, we have made researches in order to be authentic to that time. We have looked at many archaeological sites all over the country here. Uh, so when we built everything, we built it according to the archaeology. And all of this village and buildings were built here on this land. And this land is about 500 meters away from the old city, which means it took them at that time five minutes or 10 minutes to come from their homes to the land here to work and then go back home. Because they didn't live here, we didn't find any building or house here. So this wasn't residential area, but it was the farm area of the Nazareth, of Nazareth at that time. And this land, uh, at that time used to be vineyard. They grow here in the first century grapes. We know of pottery pieces from the first century. That means that this one piece was in use at Jesus' time. Here you can see the kind of sandals they used to wear. They would take the sandals off in the summertime and they simply press the grapes bare feet. No sandals. Why bare feet? There is a reason. You can think about it now. I will answer it at the one place. It's from the Turkish time. Ottoman period that we have here, we had here. So, why did they used to do it like this? For protection. They didn't want to allow soldiers during the wars to get inside through this door. A soldier riding a horse cannot go through the smaller door. He has to get off the horse. He would step inside. He would bend to get in. That's the time that people inside would be ready for them with some tools, right? Mm -hmm. To try to finish the job. Nice words. <laughs> <laughs> the open, the big one, would be open occasionally, just if they want to bring something big. For example, normally they would bring a camel inside to load it or unload it or download it, because this door used to lead to the courtyard of the house, still not to the actual house. So they open the big one, camel go inside, and then they load it. Questions? Uh, was from Bethlehem. So, in the uh, census time, he went back to Bethlehem to register. And then the time came for Mary to give birth to Jesus, and it happened in Bethlehem. And this was the fulfillment of a prophecy from Micah that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Our land here is very small, but it's very, very important strategically since it was a way between the north and the south. Whoever wanted to move north or south has to pass the land here. That's why looking up here, you can see that in the past 2,000 years, 
there are many, many empires and rulers fought together in order to control this piece of land. Since whoever controlled it, he controlled the ways between the different parts of the world. Here you can see paintings and drawings that pilgrims drew. This is how Nazareth looked like only about 200 years ago. And Nazareth seems a very peaceful place here and small, but uh, it was destroyed several times in the past. It's surrounded by mountains and hills, as you see here. Now, looking up there, you see that Nazareth is surrounded with mountains and hills. They started to build their homes down the hills. That's why the altitude of Nazareth exists in the very bottom. But then, slowly, slowly, with the natural growth, they started to spread up. The village spread up on the mountains, later on. The wind used to go up to the hills. It created a trail, because they would ride a donkey. The donkey going up hills and down many times. As he walks, he creates a trail. You can see where the donkey used to go. This trail later on became the street. That's why until today we're speaking about tough time. It was time of violence, lots of killings. Many people were killed, especially the ones who used to fight against the Romans. Over here you see a replica of a Roman soldier. He had that kind of helmet. Here you see the armor, shield, and then sword. The Roman sword was short and straight, but the more important is called two-edged sword or double-edged sword. It can kill from each side. I guess you know this verse in the Bible that says the word of God is sharper than two-edged sword. So this is the kind of sword it was referred to by the Bible. I'm going to speak here about two ways of executions that they had at that time. The first way, and it was a Jewish religious way to kill sinners or blasphemers. The victim had to be taken up on a cliff such as this. Then with their hands tied to their backs, they would be pushed off the cliff, upside down, at first. And then they stole them to death. If you remember, they wanted to do with Jesus this here in Nazareth. When they took him to the mountain, push him off. The other way of killing people of that time was the cross. And the cross was a Roman way to kill uh, rebels. The person has to carry the cross beam, only the upper horizontal piece. And he has to go, when he comes to the place of execution, he will be nailed alive and he will be left to die a slow death of suffocation. They will be suffocated on the cross since the weight of the body the weight of the body will be on their arms, so the body will be pulled down like this, and they cannot breathe in that position. In order to inhale, they have to pull their bodies up using their arms, breathing, and move down. They do this with the nails. It's very, very painful. After a short time, they become very tired. They cannot continue to do that, so they fall down and die. So what they used to do then is to fix a piece of foot in the middle of the cross where the person can sit on. Then another piece down is for their feet, and using their feet then they can push themselves more easy up in order to breathe longer time. So it was not an act of mercy, but it was done to prolong the suffering. Now this fits the story we know in the Bible. Now you know that the Bible says that Jesus was crucified with other two persons. Then when the soldiers came It's really neat, ain't it? Beautiful place. That was really neat. We went through like a little demonstration first, and now we are going to be. Now we're going to like the outside of the village, and there is a donkey over here. I just saw. Hold up. I just saw a little donkey. Right here. Look at this little guy. Can you see him? Little donkey right there. See that donkey? Little donkey out here. It's neat. Yeah, it's all the donkey. That's really neat. This is how they dressed at that time. To uh, you know, uh, we made our people dress like this. You can understand how this looked like. It's where, according to what real village used to be look, looking at that time. This is Boaz. Hello, Boaz. Hello. How are you? Bye. Yeah. With the head cover and the belt, and this is exactly how the clothes are used to make uh, out of linen. We're gonna be at the weaver's house later on. We're gonna speak about the weaving process 
uh, she weaves the wool. Okay, this is Asher. Hello, Asher. Hello. How are you? I'm Mary over there. Hello. Hello. Mary. So, uh, they're part of the village, and the village life was uh, that the whole family would participate in the businesses of the family. If it's farming, so everybody go to the land. If it's carpentry shop, everybody goes to the fields and cut wood and come back. Shepherd and shepherdess and all this. Always was uh, family jobs and family family works. By the way, if anyone likes to take any photos for yourselves with our people, feel free to do that, okay? In any time. Hello, Rebecca. This is Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca, over there. Good. Yep. One's tied down. Bigger donkey. And sometimes the shepherd will have also goats, or most of the time will have goats. But the goats are different. The goats are troublemakers. They don't listen to the shepherd easily, like the sheep. The sheep are more obedient. That's why the Bible says about Jesus that when he comes back, what's he gonna do? He is going to separate the sheep from the goats. The sheep are symbolizing the righteous people, the goats, the unrighteous. So just because of this, and people understood why he said so. Uh, in the summertime, we do shear the sheep. We get the wool of the sheep and we take the wool to the weaver's house. We're going to be there later on today to speak about the process of uh, weaving. And that's the cave, and it's a burial. We have created this, and this is a burial cave of, uh, of, uh, of people, like it was at Jesus' time. So the Bible speaks about Jesus' tomb, that it was cut out from the rock. There was a stone roller that they have rolled it and closed it. Now inside the cave, they will dig niches. He stays over there for a, a year. And after a year, they come back and they collect the bones. The bones, they put, will be put in a bone box made of a stone with a cover. It's called an ashore. This will be kept inside the cave, but the niche will be empty. The body they would was taken from there so it will be empty and ready for another person. Huh. Yeah. Uh, so the whole family members will be buried normally at the same cave. And that's why in Old Testament when you read about kings or prophets when they die, what the Bible would say always, in the end of his days he was gathered to his father oh. or laid with his ancestors. It means physically they were gathered in the same spot. Okay. About a year after, uh, 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 this was the. Uh, it's inside the tomb. So imagine that the hill was higher. And all of this was under the ground. We need to dig down to dig down to find those terraces. Those were original ones uh, uh, staying under the ground. We have found them. In 1996, we found the first archaeological find here. Which is this, where I'm standing right now, all of this was under the ground through here. And one day, one of our archaeologists was passing here, he saw part of this revealed to him. The next day, he decided to bring his tools and to start to dig it out as he used to dig it. He used to find pottery pieces inside from the first century. Uh, and then he uncovered this and he understood that this is what. Any guess what this might be? Wine press. Wine press, exactly. The grapes will be put up here. They roll their sandals away, walk the grapes, back in, press them. The juice flows down through the channel here. They'll be collected down to the hole. Then they scoop it out, put them in their jars, take them home, and make wine. Now, why the grapes should be pressed bare feet? Because it was much more nice and delicious with the feet. It comes with the feet aroma. <laughs> Believe me, that's the answer. <laughs> okay? <laughs> What's nicer? But not because of it aroma for sure. Because of the seeds of the grapes that are very bitter. If you crush them, the bitterness will be given to the juice and only your barefoot don't crush the seeds. If you think of any other technique of that time, crush into the seeds. After we found this one press, we started to dig up here and we found the tunnel. Then we also dug in the other side of the street and over there we found the rest of the farm. We continued to farm more terraces and we found we found water channels for irrigation and wells. But the most exciting thing for us was when we found a watch tower. 
that's why we built here a watchtower like the one we found on the other side why it was very important for us the watchtower because in mark 12 1 there is a parable story jesus says a man planted a vineyard surrounded that vineyard with a wall and that means that terraces and he dug a wine press in it and he built a watchtower that we have found on the other side it's amazing you can think that jesus was speaking about this piece of land and this is about five minutes away from where is Jesus' home supposed to be? If I ask each one of you, can you tell me what you can see around your house in a five minutes walk? You can tell me, right? Also Jesus, so I'm very sure he was familiar to this person. Maybe climbed this hill many times. Helping with the harvest, playing as a child. Maybe even himself pressed the grapes here, we never know. But this is the last vineyard that was maintained in Nazareth from the first century. All Nazareth is built up. Why it was kept until today? Because this land belonged to the hospital that you see here in front of you, which is Scottish Christian Mission. And they came here in 1861, more than 150 years ago. They built their hospital, they owned the land, they did not need it, so they did not build on it and it was preserved until we came in 1996 and we found it. Today we are part of the ministry of the hospital. There is an umbrella called the Nazareth Trust that has four missions underneath it. We, the Nazareth Village, hospital, nursing school, and volunteering project called Serve Nazareth. Some of the people that you see them here, dressed up, those are volunteers for that project. This is how they used to make movies in the ancient days. <laughs> He's got a camera. He's filming that dude. Thank you, it was a professional quick filming. Oh yeah, for sure not. Phil, any of you, which means I am the one that these words are speaking about. I am the Messiah. The Bible says they were amazed of him. They started to ask each other, isn't he the son of Joseph? Look at the gracious words that are coming out of his mouth. But what happened in the end of the story? They became angry of Jesus, took him out of the sin and wanted to kill him. Why? When you read the story to the end, you see that this happened immediately after that Jesus told them two stories from the Old Testament about two people who had a big faith. And Jesus used them as an example of faith. The first person, his name was Naaman the Syrian. Do you remember him? He had leprosy, but he obeyed Elisha the prophet when he told him to go to the Jordan River to death seven times. He went and did that and he was healed. Medical life to his life. Then the other story Jesus told him, it was about the widow of Zarephath, Sidon. The one at the time of Elisha, when it was a big famine, Elijah asked him a piece of bread, she had a little of olive oil, a little of flour, and he told her, if you do me a piece of bread, this will not be finished until rain will be back. She also believed that this will happen, she did so, miracle happened. Then the Bible said they were filled with anger. When they hear that, it's two stories. Although that these are two stories from the Bible. But what was the problem with these two people you mentioned? Gentiles. Exactly, they were two Gentiles. Jesus mentioned two Gentiles as example of faith to the Jewish community that was listening to him. Jesus, he did this was about David, Daniel, Samson. There are many examples in the Jewish nation. Why is it about two Gentiles? It's on purpose because in other words, he wants to tell them, to tell them, I'm the Messiah, I came to them, to you, my people, according to the prophecy that I read, and came to the Jewish people, but I came also for the Americans. Amen. I mean, the Gentiles. Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Jesus said, and that's why you got angry because. No, you're not about to do that. No. We're going to stone you. No. <laughs> so, that's exactly what happened. That's why we, when they were nervous about our, they were angry about him and they wanted to kill him. But it wasn't the right time for Jesus to die instead, right? So he went among the people, he left that <clears throat> and he went to be in Capernaum for the rest of his life. And he is settled in Capernaum for the last three years and a half of his life. Questions?
Okay, uh, this is Hannah. Hello, Hannah. Hello. Hi, good morning. You're welcome. She's our weaver here at the village. And uh, we're going to speak here about the weaving process that starts with shearing the sheep first using this kind of scissors. We use the same tools of that time to do that. Uh, so, first of all, the she uh, wool has to be washed. So they wash it a lot with a lot of water. Then they can card it using this metal com common. Uh, and then they can dye it. How they do that? If you boil it, for example, with onion peels, that's the color you get with onion peels. Boil it with pomegranates, you get red. Okay, the red. Now, walnuts or pecan shells makes the brown. Now, what about the blue? and the purple. These are very expensive colors that only kings and very rich people could use. Those were made out of sea snails. Not the shells, but the snails inside with a release kind of ink that can make this kind of color. Then they have to do spinning using that spindle. She's gonna spin to you here in a few seconds and you can watch her doing that. Look at that, she takes some wool and now she's gonna turn this into thread. Look at that. She will hold the two edges together and then the spindle that she's holding, she will spin it hmm. and they will be attached together hmm. and those will make one thread same yarn Then the final uh, stage is to weave it yeah. on the loom behind her. That's the loom. Cool. She ties the threads up on the uh, loom, and at the down she ties the uh, weights, stretch it down, and then she passes shuttle. This shuttle, look at this, up yeah, and down between the threads. She's gonna show that side, side first, and then turn yeah. and show us here. She grabbed up every other thread to put it up above the shuttle, and all the other ones would be <coughs> below. Behind. Okay. okay? Back and forth all the way until she fill it down, and then she can cut the thread, tie everything together, and take it off, and then this will be the final. Mm. Okay. Ah. okay? Questions? Oh, Joseph, he's on the camera. Hello. He's doing all the tools that we need here. Oh, if it, uh, or yoke or anything like that, we do it ourselves. We fix it when they are broken. We use the same tools at that time to do all this work. Okay, with the chisels and mallets. Now they had two volcanic stones. One is rough, that's for sanding the wood. Come in, that's the people tell Come in. Okay, that's sanding. The other one is soft stone that was used for sharpening the tools. I guess you know that plane, carpenters today still use it. Uh, it planes the wood, it makes it flat, uh, yeah, and they had a Jesus time. The last one I want to show you behind him over there, it's a really unique tool here, and I want you to guess, and you tell me please what this tool can do. What's this? Drill. Exactly, right. Good. You're, it's a drill. Drill. They use something similar, it yeah. seems. Okay. So look at that. It drills the hole. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Take a while. Okay. Yeah. It takes a year, maybe. Start a fire with that too. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gabenda. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. One. <laughs> Guys, this was the most amazing place we could have came so far. The Nazareth, yeah. the Nazareth yeah. Village. Oh, amazing oh, place. Those, uh, really materials. amazing. He wasn't a uh, farmer, but he, he probably went by with It's awesome to see all the things from back during that time that, that was recreated. It's really amazing to see the people and their character and see what they wore and everything. It's really beautiful. But anyways, we're going to get on the bus and we'll see y'all in just a little bit. Guys, we are here at our next stop, the Jordan River, where we are going to be baptized. Oh, it's a muddy river. Oh, wow. And it's actually on the border of Jordan and Israel, so. If you can't get it, honey.
Yeah, he'll have pictures too. Alright, this is Jan McClung, so we're going to baptize her. Do you have a word of testimony at all? I love the Lord and I thank Him for saving me. Amen. Okay. Hold on just a second. Alright. Alright, so I'm going to baptize you. Grab my hand. I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with him in the likeness of his death, raised again to walk in newness of life. <laughs> Don't open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> this is Suzanne's Here, big, big step, big step, big step. Coming down one. There you go. <laughs> All right. Just got Suzanne Skelton, any testimony? I just praise the Lord that He saved my soul, and I'm just so privileged to be here in this wonderful, wonderful land. Baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Breathe again to walk in newness of life. I got several. I got five or six. Right, big step. Big step. Oh, my goodness. This is Tammy Todd. I thank the Lord for saving my soul, and I just want to live for Him. I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please again to walk in the newness of life. Amen. 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 And then the preacher. Preacher coming in. All right, all right, all right. You want to hold my I will. I will. You're not going to drown me now, right? No, sir. <laughs> Amen. Third time in Georgia. Third time. Amen. There's a big step coming up. No, one more. One more big step. Here comes down. There you go. All right. How about that, brother? Amen. Alright, he's gonna this third time he's done this. Yeah. So. This ought to take this time. <laughs> you, know, word of testimony? you know, in November 1957, I was baptized twice before I was really saved. So I got baptized a third time, brother. Amen. And so this will be six times. <laughs> you got it right. Amen. 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 Baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. To walk Amen. 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 I don't have much hair to dry off. You know, that's <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Are you going to be baptized? No, sir. No, sir. Oh, I'm come gonna... on. Let's baptize him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mark's coming down to baptize his family. Amen. Is he getting baptized right now? Okay. For me. You. Never. Okay. Okay. I, 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 uh, he's not being baptized for Oh, okay. She's okay. wanting to baptize him. Okay. This is my wife, Lisa Diva. You want to say anything before you baptize? Thank the Lord for saving me and great opportunity. Amen. Hey. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Upon your profession of faith and in obedience to our Lord's command, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, Deborah. Yeah, I'll take this. Last one, I'm gonna hand you my glasses. Mark, we're getting closer and closer yes. to that right. Oh yeah, I won't name it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Watch well, I won't with him. I might. <laughs> just, just in case. Big two will move over here. <laughs> yeah, I need to go in the middle, don't I? Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's, 
the second time I get to baptize Deborah. Right? Just this button here. Just oh, look through your, to... this this eye thing um, right there. Just thankful that the Lord saved me when I was nine, and uh, I'm just glad I was able to be here. Amen. 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 Uh, find your profession of faith and sister in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. All right. Uh, All right, Ellie, can you hold this for me? Big T. Yeah, I might need help. It's <laughs> recording, right? Yeah. I just need to point it. Yeah. Right here. Okay. You want to get this from the camera back? That one? Okay. Well, he's got it? Okay. You want to let this out? Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is it. What we're going to do is we're going to put you here in the middle, facing this way. Facing this way? Yeah, and then what we'll do is we're going to baptize you this way. Okay, sure. Okay. Let me stay up a little bit. All right, and uh, would you like to say anything before we... I just want to thank God for saving me. And Amen. Hey. Lucky to be in this, this place. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. In obedience to our Lord's command upon your profession of faith, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the command of God. Amen. Amen. Glory. Amen. <laughs> All right. Praise All right. the Lord, big brother. All right. 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 Let's yeah. work across. And Lord, I want to be praise the Lord for being saved and uh, to be able to be here today and have this done. Amen. Upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I baptize you now, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Aaron, if you would like to see the death, raise the name of the Lord. Amen. That's a big step. done as the Lord has said, right? Well, we've done it. What do you say, Padre? I can't believe we did that. That's crazy. That is awesome. Whew. Guys, amazing experience. I think we're about to go get lunch. We're hungry. Whew. Here we are, guys, at our next location. We just ate lunch. We are at the Dead Sea, right here in the background. You can see it. It's back there. But we're coming up here. And look at this. We're, we're basically in the desert area, but look at this. that did come in will uh, be stopped here and the water will just continue over here on the left another cistern sorry another ritual bath and next to it the cistern that thing's deep in it. Kiln, the stove that I told you about, that we used to use in order to create the plate that we would use for heating and cooking. They had sheep also and goats that they uh, kept here. And this is where they used to keep them. Here on the right. Passed by another big cistern where I'm standing on our right side. Wow. And on our left side, you can see the dining room where they used to sit and eat together. Kitchen, kitchen stores.
Yeah. What you think about it? It's awesome. Dead Sea here. The yeah, Essenes Village here. Really cool swimming pools. Oh yeah. Those yeah. things are huge. Alright guys, we made it to our next site. We're going to be going to a waterfall. We're going on a little bit of a hike. We're going to have a great you time doing it. Hike. Yeah, it's, I mean it's a small hike, but still, it's a hike. Yeah, nonetheless, but we're going to see a beautiful waterfall from what I hear. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, so this tree is called the Christ Thorn Jujube tree. It's apparently the, the same tree that they used for the crown of thorns on Jesus when they nailed him to the cross, what they made it out of. So it's really, really neat. And look at this view. Look at this view. And then, of course, you still got the thorn trees going all the way up. Really neat place, guys. Really neat place. Check out these caves. All right, guys. This is this is it. This is the waterfall. Look at that. Gorgeous. Why don't you go show them a close? Okay. All right, guys. Whew. For a big boy, that's a hard walk. <laughs> Up the stairs and everything. Whew. Oh, man. I don't know how you do it, Ellie. <laughs> One step at a time. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Whew. Oh, look. Little bird right here. I tried to get some footage of the, the Ibex. We saw some of them, but we, they were too far away to get some good footage. But anyways, we're going to go back to the cool bus. We're going to relax a little bit. I think we're going to the Dead Sea next. To swim in it. And then I think we're going to the hotel. So, I'm excited. Rest is right around the corner. <laughs> no, but I'm loving this trip. Hopefully you guys are enjoying these videos. Um, if you are, just go ahead and give this video a like. And don't forget to subscribe. But anyways... Hopefully you're having a great day. Hopefully you're smiling a lot today. Hopefully you're living life to the fullest today. And we will see y'all at the next location. All right, guys. So this is our next location, which is actually our hotel room. We've got here to the hotel room, and this is beautiful. Now, don't mind our mess in the corner here. But let me see if you can get the, the full effect here. Look at that. That is the Dead Sea. Gorgeous place. And then we got a pool down there. This is probably like, in in Israel's terms, this is like a five-star hotel. It's beautiful. Now I'm going to show you the bathroom real quick. Now, I ain't never seen a bathroom like this before. Watch this. Watch this. Okay, this is the shower, sink, but where's the toilet? <laughs> I don't know, Big T. Where could it be? <laughs> Let's check in here. Whoa! They got two separate rooms for the toilet and the shower. I tell you what, I love this place. <laughs> this is a really neat place, guys. But anyways, I'm about to head downstairs. I'm going to check out a few things, and then we are going to eat supper. So hopefully you're smiling a lot today. Hopefully you're living life to the fullest today. Today is a great day. And we'll see y'all in just a few seconds. All right, guys. So we're here down here at the pool. Beautiful pool. Look at this. They just closed it. It's only like 625. But they closed it. But it's beautiful. Beautiful. And you can see. I don't know if you can see or not, but the mountains in the background. Yeah, you can't see them. But it's beautiful out there. There's palm trees all around. It's like a nice top over the pool. It's beautiful. But anyways, done swimming. So we're going to. Oh look, we got some, some friends from the group. We're going to head back to the, the room and get ready. But anyways, hopefully you're having a great day, smiling a lot today, and we will see y'all in just a second.
of this. Yeah, I get you this. Hello. All right, guys, so we made it back to our room. Whew. Tired, been a long day. As you can see, my hair is all in sorts. <laughs> but anyways, we had a great day. Deborah's actually sleeping on the bed right now. She's tired, but uh, hopefully you smiled a lot today. Hopefully you lived life to the fullest today. Today was a really good day. Um, if you liked today's video, give it a huge thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe to become a member of the Beard Nation. Now don't forget about our giveaway, 100 subscribers. We're gonna be giving away an iTunes gift card and a free t-shirt of your choice. All you have to do, subscribe, click that post notification bell right beside it, and comment below, say I subscribed. <clears throat> now thank you for everything guys. Thank you for watching. And until next time, God bless.